and action. <laughs> hey there, I'm Melissa, and this is Speak Brown Girl, where we speak our truth on Black women, relationships, and religion. I'm a divorced mom of three littles, a digital marketer, and a female feminist, womanist, and a strong Black independent woman. I like my comedy sarcastic, my traveling frequent, and my dancing a little hood. <laughs> and I'm your co-host, Star, a nonprofit professional by day and a real estate entrepreneur by night. More importantly, I am a new wife, a sister, a daughter, and a friend, connoisseur of spicy food, good coffee, and Black culture. I stand for the gospel, Black liberation, and head wraps. Woo woo. I am unapologetically a Black Christian woman. And I'm Marvy. I'm an administrative assistant. I'm an actress and I'm a woman of God. I enjoy game nights, exploring new places, meeting new faces, and anything animal related. Black church, music, culture are where I find most of my joy. All of my joy. Jesus is my joy. Okay. It's going to be different every time, guys. Just embrace it. It's fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> Most <laughs> Um, So welcome to season two, episode three. Um, we're excited about all the things that we're gonna bring to you. Today's episode is gonna be about black romantic comedies and we're gonna review Brown Sugar and the plot and just like some things that we noticed throughout. Um, we would love if you guys gave us your input on that, that movie, um, <clears throat> you can, what comment on the video you can shoot us a message on instagram or you know um review on any of the podcast channels and let us know your thoughts on on that particular movie but before that let's go with star on in the news star Hi guys, in the news today we're going to talk about a story that's actually a little bit old but because the new season of Black Love is out. We'll probably be um, speaking about the different stories that we hear on that in the news segments coming up. And so we wanted to start by going back to one that, ran, that went viral a few weeks ago um, of Todd and Alicia Taylor, who told a story about infidelity in that relationship and how it just kind of spiraled out of control. So we actually are going to watch the video, and then come back and give our commentary. Mm -hmm. oh. oh. Wow. Oh, my God. Uh, y'all. I have one thing to say, and it's very not censored. First off, what kind of D that do you have? Regular. <laughs> that I'm about to endure. <laughs> Regular girl, nah. You know, sometimes it just don't even be about the D. It just mm -hmm. be. What else we gonna do? I don't know what else. He was living with his mistress at the time, and then she got killed in front of her. Who killed her? That one didn't kill her. So that means you had mistress for the other mistress. Craziness. <clears throat> Crazy. I, I mean, the part that made me cringe the most when he is when he said you had to bear that too talking to his wife about her having to bear the burden of his, him grieving his huh. mistress huh. being killed in front of him and now huh. she has to take care of him grieving over another woman's death caused by his infidelity to their marriage it's just a whole mess and then you got then with your own gun like it's just a, a fire somebody else dying and y'all just Thugging it out, huh? See, that's why the Bible, the Bible talks about drinking from your own well. Um, yeah, because you avoid a lot of these these foolishnesses when you do. Do you? A lot of them. A lot of them. They foolish. I mean, is that love though? Is that love? This is this is a a, 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 a honest, deep question. <clears throat> he said we were together 14 or 15 years before it got really good number one I've been married before obviously I know that every single day being married to somebody is not going to be sunshine and rainbows 14 years 14 15 years is that love or is that just a deep rooted like 
it sounds like a codependent relationship. Like y'all yeah, are yeah. just like That's addicted, like, the, like a commitment. The, like. Yeah. Because that that's not that's not love. I'm I'm confused about like what part you're questioning is the love that the fact that they stay together. What's, any what's the any of it? So like the part where you know the covenant that they that were. I think made. it was. Go ahead. My, I was gonna say I think it's the 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 idea that they were in a loving relationship. Period. 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 I think that so many people have been through traumatic experiences that when they then um, enter into a traumatic relationship, they label that love and it's really dysfunction. So it's not, it's not love. You know what I mean? It's trauma, me being attracted to your trauma because of my traumatic past. So like if you had an abusive parent, right? And then when you get older, you marry someone abusive because you attributed every time, every single time that your parent hit you and they apologize right after, and then you marry somebody, they hit you and they apologize right after, you're attributing those to love. You know what I mean? Okay, so w did all this happen before they were married or this was like during the marriage? That was during the marriage. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it definitely couldn't be me. But I get when people stay together um, because, you know, you say for better or for worse and people make like vows and they're like I'm literally. Yeah. I mean, even I mean, for that. that. I don't know how, how much worse it could get. Like if you, since if you didn't have a reason to leave, you had plenty. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely <laughs> had, had plenty every, to everyone. leave. Had plenty to leave. Um, yeah, well, like I said, it couldn't be me that you was living with and I got a beard of murder because I was legally your wife but you wasn't even living with me yeah but Absolutely. it seemed like there was something on both sides like I don't know I mean maybe it was like mutual that they had like split up I don't know if she was doing anything on her end he made he seemed to allude to that in the beginning of whatever he was saying but either way it doesn't matter whether she was doing dirt or not like it was an extreme situation again it couldn't be me but I think it it speaks to the power of love if it truly is love. If it's truly love, like the fact that they were able to forgive and then now be in a healthy place, like that's admirable. If it's not and they're literally just codependent and just like, like, well, we don't know uh, what else or whatever the reasons are, like, well, we don't want to have to go back out there in the dating world and we're just going to make do with it, like, then that's that's questionable. But I, I'm not one to like question anybody's love and where they're at now. Um, again, couldn't be me, but, um, from an outsider standpoint, yes, we can give our opinions, but I don't, I don't know if I could say I'll, that that's I'll, not love. <laughs> I'll say that I, I, I actually think that especially men do this when they are the ones doing dirty in a relationship, they always say like, we, we, we went through this yeah. and we did that. And so I don't take his we and like looking at her and like not, you know, getting her agreement as a sign that she participated. I think it's like him wanting to bring her into his message that this is our relationship. Like, nah, nah, this is you. Okay. And that's what I would have said if I was her, but if she could have, I'm not saying that she was perfect. I'm sure she wasn't. Um, she was crazy, but she wasn't perfect. She was um, crazy. But I'll also say that that wasn't even it because they said they went through intense counseling and they moved and they thought that they were good. So that meant that that was just the beginning, okay? That one minute, one minute, 20 second clip was just the beginning. So that we thought we were good. That means that there was something that came after that, <laughs> on top of that, that on that, on that, after two people died because of y'all mess. Um, and yeah, it might not have been that there was like a whole nother like infidelity or something. It might have just been like they realized that they weren't healed from the situation. Like something came up that may have triggered them into, you know, having animosity or whatever. Like, you know, you think that you forgive somebody and then you realize like, oh, no, actually, I think I'm still harboring resentment. So maybe that could have been, it. you know, I always try to like make concessions for everybody. But yeah, I'm just trying to see maybe that's what they were talking about. I don't know. I don't know. We gotta watch episode. the rest of the episode because we're gonna watch the clip. That could be true. From based on what I saw, though, like they're that's just like that's just that's just like an, a a person who wasn't um, ready for marriage. Ooh, I know another in the news thing we could talk about. John Gray and his wife. John Gray cheating again. <laughs> I don't do that. I 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> throw the whole pastor away? No? Mm -hmm. Let's just, just do away with that. Because, like, sometimes in these spaces, like, <laughs> that infidelity gets to the point where it's, like, the woman questioning her own worth and, like, who she is and, like, because I've been there and trying to, like, change, like, who you are and who... <clears throat> change who you are and like things about you so that that person won't cheat you know what i mean mm -hmm. and I, i'm tired of those conversations I'm, I'm tired of those conversations instead of like men with looking within themselves and noticing that that is a character flaw being like oh well will you do it and even women even do it to ourselves women do it to other women too well, were you doing everything that you were supposed to be doing or what did you not do if he gonna cheat, he gonna cheat. <laughs> That's it. That's you it. The, had the audacity to talk about her cooking. The That's audacity. It. Like that was even, I mean, I feel like that was. First off, you talk about my cooking and that's why. You... With guess my why? son in the car. That was the part that got me. To get your son to co-sign on your foolishness. But the thing is, is like all of this is alleged. It was not like, you know, it was just an emotional thing. There was, pro there was allegedly no type of actual intercourse or what have you. I don't care okay. what it is. When you get my son to co-sign something that you're saying to somebody else who is not in our household, oh no, you could and take you talking hands about in Jesus' name. Is, is trying to ruin our marriage, trying to tear down our marriage. Sir, you, it's your marriage. Sir, you're the it's one. It's yours. It's this, yeah, you're the one. You're doing this. You're in your private. You're around this, passing around like Skittles. Not Satan, okay? That ain't Satan. That's you. Um, okay. but I want, the reason why I did want to definitely talk about, like, Black romantic comedies and, and stuff like that, and we can go deeper into this later, was that I am just over, like, that, whole notion of like black struggle love mm -hmm. you know like with john gray or like that that guy like mm -hmm. that whole notion of like struggle love you know what i mean i'm over it i told my mom this morning i said i am at the point in my life where if at any point it it, it don't feel like love is being served i'm i'm okay walking away just simply because like I understand that everybody has their rough patches and their stuff that they have to work through but you know normalizing that struggle where you're like begging somebody to be with you or like begging you know what I mean like mm -mm, no no absolutely not mm -mm, no um so we are we going to unpop your opinion before we go into the topic yeah we're gonna do that okay cool how long we've we been talking about this Mm. Like five minutes, we still got some more talking to do, don't? Do we have to? I'm gonna say no, it's time because I think our podcast could be shorter. Actually, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know I just got the face. It's fine. Are we ready? It literally says program length one hour on the thing. Our program is always like this. Last one was like an hour and nineteen minutes, wasn't it? Okay, 19 minutes of goodness. I'm not I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying like our they could be shorter. You're so intense. I know. I'm real aggy. So moving on to unpopular opinions. Today's mm -hmm. unpopular opinion. Men and women who are not in romantic relationships can be best friends. What y'all think? Yay or nay? I'm kind of biased, so. What's that mean? I'm saying, like, I'm kind of biased because I'm now dating a friend that, like, he was my friend for years, so. So, basically, I guess, like, let me, like, reframe the question. Like, is it possible to have a guy as a best friend and have, like, no type of romantic feelings for him at all and still consider him a best friend? And then to go a step further, further, while you're in a relationship with somebody else, still have that man as your best friend. Do you think that yes. that is possible? Yes. Okay. Star, what about you? Uh, 
I guess. Like, I mean, sure. I have a lot of guy friends. I guess the reason why I say I guess is because I guess the idea, it depends on like, what do you mean by best friend and how close, like, what are those boundaries? And obviously that could be different for everyone's relationship. Um, Because I think that like, best friend them kind of changes. Even when, you, when you're in a relationship, best friend them changes anyways, just because of like natural, like just time spent with your significant other. Um, I think it's also different if your partner like is actually friends with them as well um, because there's also like the comfort level of that person that you have to consider. Um, I think it's possible to be um, friends, good friends with um, the the opposite sex or whatever sex you are attracted to. Um, I I guess it's possible also to be best friends. I just think that, you know, you just have to set the appropriate boundaries in your relationship and you have to be like, it's not for the naive and the gullible. Like you have to like be very like self-aware and also um, just have emotional intelligence and um, social awareness as well. Because I think that sometimes like people can just enter into those relationships out of that naivety and not really because they understand and can like appropriately categorize and communicate the nature of the relationship with that person and um vice versa like oh no never and that, like everybody's like he's in love with you what are you talking about and you're like well we're just friends like girl bye <laughs> like, <laughs> so you have to be able to really have you know an intelligent and like and sometimes like n- not even like you know saying oh no but you're really just playing dumb you know like for like I feel like it's not good enough for it to just be a one-sided understanding it has to be a mutual understanding for it to have um long-lasting a long-lasting sustainable friendship and also I think the understanding has to be multiple ways depending on if there are other parties that interact with that relationship as well. Um, <clears throat> is the man single? Um, I didn't put that um, stipulation on it. It's up to you. Except for you. Um, I, <laughs> Such a I because I think that there's a different dynamic if the man is single. And what makes it different? Because what about that, the woman is single? Is that different? No, so, so she was saying, you said if could the nine, dynamic between the man and the best friend be like, and then the girl is in a relationship, right? So the girl's not already single. I think it's easier for a man and a woman to be best friends if they both are are not single. I think that I have guy friends. Mm. I also got cake crumbs on my chest. I have guy friends <laughs> and, and we are not like romantically like interested in each other at all. But I think that that's just probably due to the fact they like dated one of my friends or something. Um, but in, in college, I was actually best friends with this guy. We are not friends to this day because of that. We were best friends. And when I say best friends, I would go over his house. I would spend a night at his house. Like I would lay in bed with him. Um, he wasn't dating anybody. I ended up dating like one of his friends. Um, and I didn't find out till years later, like um, that he actually stopped talking to me because he was in love with me and he couldn't, like he he got pissed because like he couldn't find anybody because he kept comparing whoever he met to me. To this day, he's married now, but to this day he still can't be friends with me, which is crazy. But I thought we were platonic friends, right? But clearly he didn't feel the same. 
I think if I think it works better if both people have like spouses or something. I think that also people are naturally people naturally get weird once you get into a relationship. On both sides, like people like as a woman getting into a relationship, men in my life automatically start to act weird and start to act different. Even if we remain friends, people just act weird. And vice versa, when guys in my life get into relationships, they automatically start acting different. Not necessarily weird, but different, sometimes weird, depending. So I think that like something like naturally it's just and I even had a conversation, which is weird. So like one of my good friends um got married years ago when I was single and we still called each other best friends and were really close um even after he got married and also like I was also friends with his wife as well and still am friends with him and his wife but then after when I got into a relationship and got married he started to act weird and it was like well I don't really know how to you know interact it's kind of weird I don't really know like you married you've been married you've been married for years how don't you know how to interact if you if if you are comfortable enough to interact with me on a certain level with your your own wife why would you be even more weird about my husband you should be more concerned about how your wife than you are about my husband you you've you've been doing this for years now and when i get into a relationship and get married now you act weird so people just be weird and so i Typically, I use that friendship as an example of like, yeah, but I feel like the relationship got weirder after I got married. We still are friends and we still talk. We still call each other and text. You know, we still catch up. But I just think that like, again, almost every guy in my life got weird when I got into a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. I, uh, oh, I think it's sticky territory. I definitely think it's sticky territory. Um, but even like my current situation we were friends we would hang out all the time and i didn't think he liked me it wasn't until my best friend came in town and was like bro i can tell by the way he looks at you that he's like in love with you and i mean he never said anything how was i supposed to know when i had like agatha meet up with me out and he was there she was like she didn't tell me till after the fact. She was like, oh, I thought you could tell. But it's like, nah, I couldn't really tell because I was just so used to like our friendship and it just being like a platonic friendship. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I think it's weird all around. It's just, I don't know. I definitely think that there should be some conversations had about like boundaries and such as friends and then as friends who are also dating other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. You ain't got no input, Marv, and this was your unpopular opinion? I I mean, y'all were talking. I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> so wait, I will share my probably unpopular opinion. So I, I think I would probably lean heavily into how we're defining best friend and this could be an an issue of like semantics but like for me a best friend is like somebody that you go to first you confide in they know before anybody else all of the things that are going on the dirt the struggles the heartache the questions the doubt the good times the bad they know you better than anybody else so I think it's a little bit easier and safer when you are single and the and the guy or opposite sex or whoever um same sex whatever if they are single if you're both are if you both are single and then you know engaging this relationship and they know everything about you that's cool or what have you um i do think that it gets to be a little bit sticky once somebody gets into a relationship because as like has been the common thread it's like that weird like almost possessive nature that kind of happens not necessarily possessive in like a negative way but that's like this overprotection that I maybe would qualify it um that happens when somebody gets into a relationship of like oh well you know didn't I I could do that like or like I don't know if I approve or like all of a sudden it just becomes like this like uh, I don't know if they're good enough for you or I don't know how I feel about them like I don't know if they're gonna fit into our thing that we already have going um even if it's supposed to be strictly platonic so I think that for me when I get into a relationship I would definitely feel some type of way if my man was going to his best friend first. 
um, um, to tell things to, to confide, you know. Oh, things. I don't think that's an option. Yeah, no, I would definitely, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was ni- I was saying it nicely, like, by saying I would feel some type of way. What I really meant to say is, yeah, dead that, dead that ASAP, um, that's over. Hold on, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but see, I'm trying to be nice, I'm trying to be good. Time frame that he must transition from his best friend to you? I mean, I definitely am going to have the conversation like while we're dating and talking or what have you, I'm going to ask about his friends and hopefully I will get to meet his friends. So once I'm able to see like the relationship that he has and if he does happen to have like a really good friend and we've talked about it and he tells me like, oh, yeah, like, oh, I was hanging out with like, we'll call her. Sequita. Susan. I don't know. <laughs> Sequita. Sequita. I don't know where that came from. I was like, let me find the an- Anyway, so let's say I was, he's hanging out with, yeah, I was like, yeah, I was hanging out with Sequita, or yeah, or like, yeah, me and Sequita were talking about, you know, like, what I should do with my business plan or what have you. I'm definitely going to start to feel the type of way. So, um, yeah, we would have to have a conversation. And like you said, like, it's about setting boundaries. It's about being upfront, upfront um, about what what your expectations are for relationships i'm gonna let the guy know like listen i don't really feel comfortable with you being so close to sequita um i'm gonna need you to either like you name every time you said what feel like you change her name every time you said it's Laquita. always been sequita you said anyway Laquita. you said no Laquita. Nope. Laquita. She said sequita Laquita. <laughs> no, I always said Sequita. You was just like, hearing yeah, things. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what Sequita. So we gonna go. That's with why I use it. Sequita <laughs> is always gonna be yeah, her yeah, name. You better know somebody named Sequita, girl. I don't know nobody named Sequita. That's why I went with Sequita. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, at the end of the day, I would. It's about being upfront in the beginning of the relationship and getting to know the friends and where where are the boundary lines and actually being comfortable with saying hey, I'm not comfortable with you being so close to this person and being able to take that on the other end as well. If he's telling you like, look, I'm not comfortable with that. I would rather you come to me before you talk to so-and-so. I'm not going to say like, you can't be friends with that person anymore, but I'm definitely just letting you know, it doesn't make me feel comfortable. um, That type of relationship that you have with that person. I think that that transition needs to happen naturally. I think that as you start to have that conversation, like have conversations with your boo and you're like, and you are both equally invested into like, you know, um, your futures and those things like that. And you come to find that this is someone that you can confide in. Then I think that that transition will naturally like happen. And so like, it'll be like, in my ear, sorry. And so it'll be like, you know, oh man, me and babe been talking about like me getting this big meeting and now that this big meeting is tomorrow, I, I can't wait to tell anybody but her. You know what I mean? I think that that transition will happen naturally as you start to trust that person with your goals and with like the information that you feed them and with like allowing that person into your life. Yeah, but it better not be another another female that you trust in. Well, it's, when the so it's just once it becomes this is an exclusive relationship, an exclusive monogamous official relationship. You know, I think that yeah, I think that's when the boundaries have to be explicit, whether you're comfortable or not. I mean, yeah, I'm definitely I mean, I, I just, up front. I, and I'm just talking about hypotheticals too because David don't ha- doesn't he doesn't have any real female friends. So I don't. That's why I was kind of rich, like trying to, in my mind. So I was thinking about my own friendships. Um, but there's nobody who I talk to like, or, no, or there's no guy who I talk to like. I might talk to you guys about an idea or something. You know, if we were talking or whatever. You know, you know, you, I talk to you guys about stuff, but you know, I talked to David about everything. So but we're also married now. So I, I can't really think back to when we first, you know, started dating, like when that f- transition first started happening. But and yeah, I probably, yeah. In the relationship with you. So what? I said, obviously I'm not in the relationship, but I think the transition for y'all happens like 
as y'all both started to get more invested in one another and like felt like you could safely like you were comfortable and you could safely confide in that person I think that that's when the transition like naturally happened and so I, we're talking about just with, with the opposite sex right transition of, like so I'm yeah, supposed yeah, yeah. to be talking about the opposite yeah, sex yeah, we're talking about- I, I don't even feel like that's a trust thing like if I have other I don't only have male friends and so like I wouldn't have to only go to a male if I didn't trust David. I there are other people that I could go to if it, we were in a relationship when it was early on. Um and I don't so think men like that though. Huh? I don't think men think of it like that though. What do you mean? Of like I'm not gonna go to a woman to confide in because I have a girlfriend. I should go to my male friend. Again, I don't know because David doesn't have any female friends. So um we've had that conversation about male friends i'm like how he know i don't know dang i'm jealousy uh uh, y'all i'm jealousy y'all but that's you know that's a guy i don't that's one of his boys i'm like oh he oh he know about your day no know about your day okay tell him i said what's up then No, that wasn't it. What What did you have to say, Marvy? Oh no, I said cool. Yeah. So what should you do if you have a guy friend and he has like this weird reaction to you dating somebody? It depends on what the real uh, reaction is. Uh, like, is like if it's just like oh no, that like I think Marvy said it or somebody said it like coming in between what we have like no, nah, it ain't about us. If you have a weird feeling, it better be about facts, facts, facts. Like, oh, he, you know, this seems kind of playerish. I feel like he's, you know, manipulating, you know, whatever. Like, it better be some facts. But if you're just like, mm, I don't want our relationship to change, that's a little deeper than just. That's not um, deep stuff. You was in a whole relationship with me. Right. And you're in mine. And you're like, oh, you're getting jealous? Like, what's that? What's that on you? That's a whole nother thing. But yeah. I think I'm the type of person that's um, going to uh, the natural transition. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think that that would be ideal, right? In an ideal world, the natural transition happens where it's like, oh, you don't really have to discuss it. It's just understood. I'm in a relationship now. We can't hang out as much. We don't, we can't talk about things as much. Um, It's especially awkward. Yeah. Um, I have a a family member who, you know, has a guy who's a a best friend and now, you know, he's got a, he's got a baby on the way and a girl and like, they just, it just was an awkward situation when the transition happened because he still reaches out to her for like advice on like, oh, what about this furniture and what have you? And then she finally came to the point where it's like, no, you should be talking to your girl about these things. Like, not me. And at the end of the day, she had to, she had to like take a step back and realize like, yo, I think I kind of low key have feelings for him, but I don't want it to get it in the way of our friendship. And she had to set boundaries and just be like, look, we can't talk on the phone till three in the morning. Like that's just not appropriate um, when you have like a whole girlfriend, like and baby on the way. That, that's not okay. So yeah, boundaries definitely have to be set. And for me, I know I'm the type that I'm going to have to like just verbally talk about it. It's just not going to be just like a a natural progression of things as much as I would like them to be. I'm going to because I'm I'm learning that I'm Type A. I'm just going to be like, okay, so um, just learning that. No, yeah, I'm definitely just learning that I'm Type A. And actually, it was a guy on Hinge that asked me if I was Type A. Um, because I was asking about um, when we could talk on the phone, like have an an actual real conversation. And like, I had tried to like set it up a couple times and like, he kind of like, you know, missed the time that we were going to talk and then would like message me like the next day, like in the evening. And when I got like quiet, he was like, so are you like type A? I was like, what do you mean? I was like, me? Type A? No, like I'm way too all over the place. And he was like, well, you seem to be really type A about this phone call. I was like, no, I just was trying to get to know you. Excuse me. Like if that's type A, then you do you boo. Bye. But no, he, um, just, he just unreliable. That's all. Yeah. He 
yeah, he's unreliable, but I am still, I recognize, I was like, oh wait, I do have type A qualities. And I think it was like, a lot of it came from my job because I am an administrative assistant. So everything has to be like, eh, done yesterday and like set schedules and times and alarms. So yeah, but because I am that way, I feel like I, I would definitely just need to verbalize everything and just make sure that we're on the same page instead of like assuming things and waiting for things to happen. Um, so that there's no margin of error anywhere in our communication. God, I'm I'm a lot. <laughs> you say margin of error? I sure did. I heard it as soon as it came out of my mouth. <laughs> there will there will be lots of margin. There will be a large margin of error. I'm just gonna let you know this ahead of time, so you don't point it later that there will be a margin of error that you are gonna have to just. She's I overthink everything anyway. Error. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Oh my gosh. It's all about avoiding the margins of error for me. And I know that that is like totally impractical when you're dealing with a whole person that's different from you. And this is why this podcast is therapy for me outside of my therapist. Um, <laughs> I just hear things that I'm saying out loud and I'm like, oh yeah, like you're silly, silly rabbit. That's just silly. <laughs> What? You make me feel normal. You make, I make you feel normal. I'm glad, Alyssa. See, we're like this same but different kind of crazy and weird. So I feel you, girl. Because mine never comes out here. It happens all here. And then I just assume it's real because it happened here. And then I'll be like, wow. And you'll be like, we never had that conversation. <laughs> I had it up here. <laughs> Exactly. You just weren't, you weren't there. You weren't present. You weren't paying attention. It's still a very valid conversation. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, this is a great segue into our next topic, right? Sorry, I told you. Now it's time for our... I'm so tired of trash horn. Please help us. <laughs> If anybody is willing to donate a horn, you every time, sir. Is that what that is? What are you talking about? I don't have a cue. Exactly, because you miss it every time. It's the third episode, and you've missed your cues. Every I don't have a story time. What are you talking about? We have, have a in the news, and you don't. We never had a song. Yeah. We never had a jingle for in the news. We made it up. Okay, so well, basically, I never thought I had to. This is a plea for any um, sound engineers out there that are just looking to donate some sound effects that are quality. Please hit us. We're up. not gonna Please apply scroll. them. What? We the, we're not gonna apply them. We do the bare minimum here. Okay, so free. I like free. If it's free, it's me. So speak brown girl podcast at gmail dot com for any sound effects, namely a horn, on there. little bells anything to transition well, if you now would. we have access to all of those things you know that right i like, know i we know but we're trying things. to we're trying to put people so off about having to go in and put it all in there which is why the, the question about putting the video in there was like mm, i don't know about all that okay, so <laughs> if you if you are a sound engineer slash editor and would like to volunteer with our podcast please reach us at speak brown girl podcast at gmail.com mm, okay <laughs> That extra blink at the end was. <laughs> it's just to let them know it's real. Like, <laughs> you love us. Come through. <laughs> the infomercials. All right, go ahead, Alyssa. You can, you know, you can do the shameless plugs all you want to. I ain't got nothing to say. I am not one thing to Shameless say. plugs? What do you mean? No. I'm not begging. No. Not come. All right, so our topic of the day is Black romantic comedy. Topic of the day, topic of the day. <laughs> I'm so mad. See, Star just likes the, like, the element of surprise. <laughs> She's just like, I'm going to do it when I feel like it. Talk <laughs> about my sound effects. <laughs> anyway, 
Our topic of the day is about Black romantic comedies. And we decided to review uh, the movie Brown Sugar. It's a movie from 2002? Yep. Is it? And if you haven't seen it, I'm just going to share the plot with you really quick. And then we're going to go over, like, you know, what we thought about the movie and all that fun stuff. Um, Because I have a theory in my head but until we go over all of these black romantic comedies I can't prove that theory to be true so the plot is about like this movie is about a story of lifelong friends um Andre and Sydney and the two can attribute their friendship and the launch of their careers to a single childhood moment the day they discovered hip-hop on a New York street corner Um, Now, some 15 years later, as they lay down the tracks toward their future, hip-hop isn't the only thing that keeps them coming back to that moment on the corner. That? Where you at, Star? (laughs) Star, you you done hiding? You want to start? Why do I have to start? I don't want to start. I don't know where they're taking a nap, a whole nap. A whole nap. nap. This chair is comfortable, but I feel like if I sit back, I'm going to be too far from the mic, so. (sighs) All right, go ahead, Marvin. We're all wearing black today, I just realized. Wait, so what are we doing? Sorry, we're just talking about our thoughts? Black on black, my skin's so black. Shoulder shimmy. You and this shimmy, I can't. (laughs) So yes, brown sugar. Um. Yep, I watched it 18 years ago, and um, I thought, (laughs) that's a lie, y'all, I just saw it last night. Um, I tell on myself, I I can't, anyway, so I saw it last night, and I already don't even remember it. Um, Some of the things that, (laughs) so the first thing that stood out to me, this is totally unrelated to the things that we've been kind of talking about already. So I know we're going to talk about colorism later on um, in our season, but I thought it was interesting that the main character, man, was a dark-skinned man, and that the main character, woman, she's still lighter in complexion, but she wasn't as light as the, she wasn't like the villain, she really wasn't, and actually... I sided with her quite a few times, more than probably most would. But anyhow, I just thought that the casting was um, was good for a change. And I don't want to sit, call names of other artists, um, producers and directors and writers who have chosen opposites. Um, I don't want it to be a color war or anything like that. I just thought it was refreshing to see that it wasn't like, the bad guy is the, you know, or the good guy is the light skinned guy and the bad girl is the dark skinned girl or what have you. It wasn't it's the dark skinned girl. What you talking about? <laughs> the darker skinned girl. It wasn't so, they were both light skinned. They were both light skinned, but uh, <laughs> Tay's, Tay's fiance slash wife was, was definitely lighter than, um, Ooh, than so that was like that. This is a, yeah, then tonight, like, no, so yeah, brown. that's it. This is, <clears throat> yeah, she is brown. That movie, she looks light. All I'm saying. No, she definitely did look very light. I mean, she's she's light. She's very light, lightly complexed. Um, yeah, so that was just like one of the first things that I had noticed. I was like, oh, this is different um, from the, the, the rom-coms that shall remain unnamed because I still do hope that they will call me. Anyhow, so yeah, that's my one little piece. Somebody else can go next and weigh in. I actually thought it was the opposite. That was like, dang, it's, a, it's real bright up in here. But um, You said it was real what? Right. In the sense of like, I mean, that's typically how a lot of, you know, like rom black rom-coms from just the 90s, early 2000s are like their the love interests are like, you know, they all kind of look the same. Um, you know, whatevs. Uh... I, I mean, I thought it was a pretty trash plot. I actually sided with the wife, I mean, almost the entire time. Even when she cheated, I'm like, y'all had to make her a villain somehow. <laughs> like, exactly. y'all had to, to justify her. this. 
Right, to justify y'all mess, y'all had to make her a villain. It was like, oh, well, you, you see, she cheated. Well, gotta go with the Super Bowl. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, that was literally how it was. It was like the whole plot crumbled in a second. <laughs> and I'm uh-huh. like, and this is justifies y'all trash? Like, I don't... Since, I mean, she she you she could sense y'all was had something going on this whole time. Like, it doesn't justify her cheating, but please, don't try to make her act the villain in this. Um... Yes, I thought that was hilarious. Like, bruh, you were just waiting for your loophole to get up out of that me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm. Alyssa's thinking long and hard. Go ahead. Uh, also, I, was, I will add that David and I got into a very heated discussion before this about the movie because I was like, it was trash or whatever. Because, like, the pot, I mean, the pot was like... Y'all, y'all could have did this before y'all got other people involved. Why y'all had to get all these other people involved before y'all had figured it out? Y'all could have just figured, y'all could have figured it out with, with, without having to. And you, y'all kissed and all that stuff in the towel the, right before the wedding. Y'all could have stopped uh-huh. it then. All right. Uh-huh. So y'all had to drag other people into y'all mess to figure it out. I don't, ain't nothing. I'm not mad at y'all falling in love, but y'all could have did that sooner. That's all I was saying. Oh, it was a mess. And David was saying that he thought, you know, like her choosing to start to like him so late was like oh now that he you know he's an executive and he glowed up you know now you like him and I'm like I think it's like why you choose to like him now that he got a woman you could have exactly. liked him before he proposed but now that he proposed and now your eyes got big like girl I was exhausted I was rolling my eyes so much <laughs> Messy. why are y'all together so much why y'all back to back why y'all hugging so long everything was like how y'all hugging this long? Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. Melissa? All right, so I'm going to start with Most Deaf and Queen Latifah, partially because I like Most Deaf. <laughs> yes, I miss him. Yasin Bey, man, please come back. We miss you. He's so cute. <laughs> He's so adorable. Um, I think how he was like so shy and like, you know, want to talk to her, and then he'll talk to her, and he, like, stutters and stuff. I thought that was so cute. I was like, oh, just talk to her. <laughs> just talk to her. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, I'm giddy over most of the lines. Um, Brown Sugar is one of my movies I like. Uh, it's one of my Black romantic comedies I like. Um... I do not, one of the ones that I really hate is Love and Basketball. We're talking about brown sugar. I know, we're going to talk about that next time, but I'm just saying, in in comparison, I do like brown sugar. But their, that unpopular opinion was on point for even this movie, right? Exactly. Like this whole podcast today was just like, black love, black love, black love. Black um, mess. Don't forget, because no, no, no. this right now is black mess. Black love. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, obviously, there were a lot of, like, key issues here as far as, like, um, healthy relationships. Um, there were not healthy boundaries between, you know, Sydney and Andre. Thus, like her looking to someone else, thus Andre's wife looking to someone else to fill that void that she had with her husband. Um, And if you knew it got that heated the day before the wedding, you should have just stood up and be like, ain't no way you could have been like that with me. (laughs) And you right here doing your vows right now. I think it shifted for her as far as like how she viewed him because initially he was a player. And so when he started dating this girl, he was like, oh, I like her. I want to settle down. So then she began to see him in a new light of like, oh, this is what, like, I mean, obviously, you know, this is what somebody, you know, this is what he looks like settled down, I guess. So I think she began to see him in a different light. And that's what made her um, interested afterwards. Um I'm sick she did Boris culture like that, but, you know. 
Yeah, um, like, she was trying oh, to no. find. They were trying to find something wrong with him. I'm like, he didn't do nothing wrong. He didn't do it. nothing wrong. Was like, oh, so you didn't you didn't read it? You didn't like, girl. That's a lot of times you, that your spouse or your your significant other may not have time to read something or watch something. Like, like that's that's all y'all got for him to make and him he a villain. basketball player. That y'all was reaching, y'all was reaching to the stars trying to find a reason to make like, him. Like, and I think Andre, when he saw her with Boris Kojo, and he like, you ain't really happy. Like, first off, you a damn hater, okay? Uh huh. Like, why would you even? You know what I mean? You ain't really happy. Like, you sound like a hater. But um, why would you even like? You know, if if I'm your best friend, like you say I am, then why wouldn't you encourage me in that? You know, why wouldn't you like help usher this on if you really want to be happy for me? And but, his face when when um he proposed to her, beside his wife, I'm like, if my you standing next to your wife and your face all jacked up when this woman get proposed to, boy, uh-huh. like, uh-huh. Whew. <laughs> if I was, he was gonna murder, he whispered on the phone, Sydney, his wife was like, Bruh, come to bed, I'm trying to smack the damn phone out his hand. <laughs> damn face when he got his face <laughs> got his face all turned up when when she uh getting proposed to i don't be like you jealous what's up uh, there's something you want to tell me exactly excuse me we need to leave now i'm sorry we have to go and then cuss him out in the car um but i mean the fact that like boris even had to be like like how do you deal with the fact that they're so close like everybody around sees that like i would not be okay like trying to like justify things to strangers like you know oh you know they're just friends they're like really close like nah i mean you can you call me trying to keep up appearances money, or whatever you give my man seed money i'm tearing it up yeah that's on period okay oh you know you know when she was being that's petty period. at the bridal shower when she was answering all the questions about him I'm like, girl, you yeah, gotta yeah, offer yeah. something. You gotta act like you don't know. Let somebody else answer, but you answering all the questions about this man? Like, you was just being petty. It's like, not a good look. It makes you look messy. It makes you look thirsty. It makes you look bad, because you over here are single, sis, and now you over here all in this woman's man. Like, it don't look. It's not a good look. And it it's ain't about you. It's my bridal show. Okay? Mm-hmm. You wanna come with your foolishness? <laughs> don't. <laughs> don't come. Don't, don't come to any. Of, I get married again. Don't come to any of my my marriage related things thinking it's about you. It's not, okay. Mm-hmm. And if at any point you don't want it to be about me, uh, don't come. Exactly. Because they like the friends is looking like. Mm. I mean, exactly. Man, but I'm a if you're. Mm. Neat. Yeah, if your friends are if your friends are like questioning it and like mm, sis that don't look good then you should probably take a hint and be like we really need to like sit down and talk about this but the thing is i feel like a lot of women they're afraid that their men are going to call them jealous they're afraid to lose their man they're afraid of like all of these things so then they go on just in this you know harboring all this resentment towards you know this woman and their husband, instead of like just being upfront and talking about it. And then when they try to talk about it, the man's like, oh, you're not on my team. And I think the thing that this movie tried to play up in particular was the fact that like, you know, hip hop was their passion. So they're like, find somebody who shares the same passion with you. If they don't share the same passion with you, then you shouldn't be with them. Like, cause you need to be happy and you guys need to both be on the same page and be doing the same thing. And that's like not reality. Like the reality yeah, they were, is sometimes- they were reaching with some of that stuff. They were. The reality is sometimes you might end up with like an accountant and you might be a model. Like it's not always like compatible. You never know. An accountant, could you not pick a more boring job? I'm just saying that's how it is like they're they're making it out to be that like you're gonna have the same passions and that's the sign of like you know a good and healthy relationship Sanai you were Sid sorry Sid you were messy you should not have kissed that man at his point of weakness he's talking about his job something that he's passionate about and like questioning whether he wants to stay and she decides to kiss him in this moment of vulnerability well she what she she decides to answer the door in a towel that's the first thing this is the thing. Even if it is your best friend, just be like, hold on a second. Let me put a robe on because I know that on. you are still a man. Even though you're my best friend, you're still a man at the end of the day. Let me be decent. And I want to be respectful of your fiance and put exactly. on. Like, exactly. Exactly. 
come on get real i mean i think that like i mean and this is where where like i get the like the point of like feeding black people like i guess like romanticizing struggle of because the things they were trying to villainize didn't weren't bad things and so it was weird because it was like (laughs) when she was when they were at the boxing thing and um they were his wife and her were boxing and she mentioned like you know i haven't seen him because of this um this label thing and she was like thing this is his this is his dream you know she they try to make it like she's talking it's very valid for her to be frustrated by something that's taking her husband her spouse away from their home and away from their relationship that is a valid concern and so to make it seem like what you're downplaying his dream that's all she said the whole movie about that made it even seem like like since like they didn't do a good job of villainizing her or villainizing the position it was very weak very weak threads I thought the the hip hop thread was pretty weak too, because it's like y'all randomly want to bring in hip hop, but she didn't talk a ton about her career, uh, like at the beginning she did, at the end she did, but all in the middle was her being messy with this man and his and his wife, for the most mm-hmm. part. He talked about his career, quitting his job and stuff like that, but her career wasn't really a focal point to the end, and so the weak, you know, thing at the end about hip hop and when she fell in love with hip hop and all this stuff was corny to me because I'm like. Now it's about y'all bonding over hip hop, and it's just it's like ugh, y'all are just y'all are, y'all are drawing the the wrong conclusion, <laughs> the weakest conclusions that you could draw from this movie was frustrating me because I'm like, yo, this is such a weak analysis. <laughs> but the thing is, it's like I, even though the movie was messy, I appreciated that it wasn't your typical rom com, even though it was wrong in my eyes, like the message that it was sending. I don't typically like rom- rom-coms and I think it's always like uh, you know pushing the envelope when the villains are actually the main characters. They were both wrong in Sid kissing um, Andre before the wedding and then them sleeping together albeit five minutes but like while she's engaged and supposed to be planning for her wedding like the villains like it's you're like you're cheering for these two people that are clearly in the wrong and then trying to like justify it and put it in this pretty package so even though, yes, it was wrong, I appreciated the different take on love. Like, I, I think that stories should be able to show different sides of life, wrong or not, whether you agree with it or not. Mm-hmm. So I appreciated that about it. I just think that, that it's always weird that it's the Black love that always takes these weird takes on love. Like, you can't have, like, a, a love that... Is it is always? I, I mean, it's, it's very... Or it is not, not, it's not necessarily fidelity, infidelity, but it's either, like you have to be with the bus driver because the other man's beating you. Or you have to, like, Napoli ever after, the man who has the money, he, he bought you a puppy instead of a ring. And so now you're with the, the, the broke hairstylist with, who don't got no car. And then, so it's like, either That's way, like, for you to find love, you have to... Extremes, yeah. Yeah, it's like these, like, terrible extremes that you have to accept, accept and settle for in order to have a love story um, as a Black woman which i think is pretty yeah it's pretty so i do have a question though with like maybe in this movie in particular is it setting people up for incorrect expectations when it comes to relationships in regards to what they should value or want in a partner and whether they should have the same passions and whether they should love the same things and and things like that I mean, like I said in the beginning, like I, everyone is going to be different. Everyone's going to be attracted to different things. I think that, I mean, it does set some unrealistic, unrealistic expectations for what a relationship should look like. Uh, But at the end of the day, it's really up to the person to be like, what do I value more? Do I value more like the companionship and the fact that I can trust this person, that they're stable, that you know, we're on the same page about the things that matter most, or is it that like we're on the same career path and we do the same thing and the thing that's like our purpose thing, like is similar, it's the exactly the same. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's a story. It's not supposed to be like a life book or a guide to love or what it should look like. Um, but again, kind of to Star's point, like we do have all these examples of struggle love 
Um, but that also does make a rom-com interesting. So yeah, I don't know. I, I wouldn't try to fashion my life after this relationship. I would really, as a person watching, have to be like, what is most important to me? And that's what's going to attract me to that person. I do think that there is a reoccurring theme though, especially in black comedy or black, black romance around um, like this valuing the dream over like stability, um, valuing the dream and the drive and the passion over like it's the one who already has it together when they meet you. Like it's almost like it's always like the rich guy or the put together guy is always the wrong guy. But the right guy is the one like he has these dreams and he just wants you to grind with him and you have to like help build him. And so like although like this particular movie, you know, I don't think many people are watching this particular movie and like saying like, oh, that's what I want. I think when you the compilation, like you talk about love and basketball, like people, people like, oh, like love and basketball is like <laughs> like the black notebook <laughs> you know like it's it's like the the love story that people like look up to and so you do have like these reoccurring things where like the the dream the goal but it's like can't can't we be passionate and meet our goals and, and also be successful you know what I'm saying? so it's like why does it have to like why do we have to pit those things against each other yeah and then, yeah i just yeah do you think it's because, and this is like a really bold statement to even say, because you know, I hate overgeneralizations. Do you think it's because so many of our black men are on that entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial tip uh, and they mostly just have dreams and not a whole lot of results? I think it's because they just have dreams. I don't know if they're all entrepreneurs, but I think historically, I mean, we are, we just know like just statistically like black women are more educated than black men, black men, women. I mean, black, black men still make more to the dollar than black women, like, if you're talking about apples to apples, but, like, generally speaking, black women make more money than black men if we're just, if we're not, if we're not talking about in the same job. Um, and so, like, if you're just going to pick, you know, just to randomly pick someone off the street, then the likelihood of that black man being better positioned in life than the black woman is probably rare so i think that it is some things that some part of it is just like telling the stories that we see and telling the stories that we experience as black people i just think that those aren't the only stories and so like and sometimes it's not even black people telling those stories it is other people regurgitating the stereotypes and the and the themes and motifs that we that we get from those stories over and over again and so it's like when again it's kind of like our last podcast we talked about black women not being the monolith like black people generally speaking black stories black experience experiences aren't monolithic so that's really which is why like the cosby's like the cosby show was such a big thing and like um different world was such a big thing because it was a different take on you know after like the good times you know and that kind of like the struggle type of shows around black people black families and having like a black family that wasn't portrayed this way and black you know black children going to college like that was just a different take that we didn't see doesn't mean that it wasn't happening we just didn't see it and so i think it's a similar thing of like we're retelling the same stories but there are still more stories to be told yeah and i think that that's going to be up to the new generation um, of writers and directors because a lot of these you know people from the 90s um, and early 2000s they're just talking about the things that they saw from their family or from their own experiences mm -hmm. so hopefully now that there are so many you know young black people that are on their grinds and are really like you know trying to do something different with not just their life but their relationships love money all those things hopefully more new stories will come out of that um i can't think of a whole lot off the top of my head um of of stories outside of like insecure where they're yeah insecure is probably like my favorite show out right now that's like showing young black professionals and um, you know those who are still on the struggle bus and trying to figure it out and then those who are doing really well um so yeah i'm looking for more shows like that in the future i think that uh, the photograph is one of my new favorites <laughs> i haven't seen that yet I'm well we should do that one next we, we should, should. let's do it next so let's mix mix it up
Can we have a girl night and watch it together? I mean, from a social distance. <laughs> I mean, I was going to bring up the other, what was that movie that we watched together at the time about the guy in wine? So I was going to bring that up. as like a story. That um, one was good. It wasn't a love story for real because his girlfriend was pop up, popping up at random times. I'm like, yeah. She was an afterthought. <laughs> nope, she was an afterthought. I up, um, the photograph because, I mean, um, I brought it up because, like, she was an art curator and he was, like, uh, um, he was a writer. Um, and so it's always nice and refreshing to see us in roles that are um, different than our norm. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not going to tell more about that movie since we're going to do that. I haven't seen it, so we'll watch that one next. You haven't seen it either? That's probably because I'm a I'm a rom com aficionado. But yeah, I'm not. I was surprised he didn't watch that movie with me today. I'm like, hey, we're about to watch it. We watch it, but he can't watch it. Aw, he wanted to spend some quality time with me. But he was, he was like, I'm not about to watch this bootleg. We gonna have to. Pop. He was like, <laughs> he was like, you can, you're not about to go out like that. Give me a second. Let me, let me find it. <laughs> we were talking about everything. Well, nothing. I'm we're trying to watch the Twilight trilogy series with me. Hmm. I'm trying to convince this one to watch Twilight, the Twilight series with me. This you one as in your child? When you say this one, you looked over there. Is he there? No, he's not here. I was oh, you said this okay, one. Okay, that's what I was trying to figure out. Like on my phone because he just texted me. Oh, okay. That's what we, because you were looking over. That's what we thought. Oh, so it is the guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I watched it with my kids already. They ain't got no new insights. Um, you watch Twilight? I haven't seen it. So do you think it. rom-coms subconsciously give us this like idealistic view of love and that we should because people are like oh I didn't feel butterflies is there a moment where like you can like someone and not feel butterflies you know what I mean like because what if one day you wake up and you don't feel butterflies? Does that mean you shouldn't be that person anymore? You know? Mm-hmm. So I I always wonder where whether like romantic comedies give us this idealistic subconsciously. Like consciously we may not be doing it, but like subconsciously does it give us this idealistic view of love where we are like expecting things to look a certain way and then they when they aren't that way we attribute that to not being love i mean i think just like anything in the media like the way that black women are portrayed or even black men are portrayed like all of it subconsciously is sending a like subliminal messages that we that we take in and we are constantly bombarded by so much of the same it's like the same script over and over again and they just like switch it up a little bit um and people just kind of take that as word as bible and like they try to apply it to their own lives and that's why like you know when a song comes out and you're going through heartbreak you play the song because it like you know gets you in the feels and you're like oh they get me and it's like you know and then they play this other song and you're like i want to feel this like this is the love that i'm looking for i'm looking for a ride or die i'm looking for this so yeah we have these things constantly like just like a barrage of what love and life is supposed to look like and we we get so caught up in it that we don't understand like that's not reality that's what yeah. they're selling to us it's not it's not imitate it's not an imitation of life it's just a reality show that they're trying to get us to buy and it's not healthy Sorry. in large amounts Sorry you uh, want to say something uh, was there a question that's what the answer I did give a question <laughs> Did I answer? I didn't answer. No, you didn't. That's I just talked for like five minutes. What was the question? Did her monologue again? <laughs> What's no. the question? Can somebody repeat the question? Please? Do the do do rom coms like help perpetuate this like false narrative of like what love should be, and are we like subliminally being influenced by that? Yeah, but I think it's like we are trying to tell a story in a short amount of time. Like, you know, things are over dramatized and. I think that's what we, we like to get the feels and it's the ethos that um, that draws us to love stories, although that may not be the reality. I mean, even like the foundation or historical context of marriage hasn't necessarily even been 
rooted in romanticism that's pretty it's a pretty recent thing like connecting like marriage to love and romanticism when i say recent i mean like in society not like in our lifetime um so yeah so i think that yes but i think that if we didn't feel anything if it was just like all right you're going to buy this property you're going to buy this wife okay she's going to produce offspring (laughs) for you and you're going to be fruitful and multiply and then go on about your life i don't think that we would be as drawn to those stories so (laughs) but again it's like the comparison thing when comparison is a killer as we know so whether it's like in movies or what have you people are always going to be like you know that's what i want like oh they made it happen like i want that so yeah there's like entertainment and then there's the unrealistic expert entertainment slash you know other people's lives slash like what is reality and what what is actually what is it that god wants from me what is it that i'm supposed to be seeking out as opposed to what is being put before me which is like what do you think how do you think practically we can separate the two and this is where i think that having good examples and experiences of healthy relationships across the board in your life and community like all, all over the place is important because unfortunately when you only get images and stories about family and love and all those types of things from the media and you don't have healthy um, references in life, like everything is going to be like idealistic. Everything is going to be like, you know, wrapped up with a bow and a button because that's just how storytelling is in the media and I think it's it's just so important to that's why I think it's important for one for for us to tell our own stories um for us to obviously like be connected in community and, and to our people around us and um to be able to like hold up examples I think representation is important um across yeah all forms of media and I think um yeah, doing the, I mean, I think there's, I mean, there's more work, like even like books and there's, there's more work that could be done around creating, um, that dynamic of reality versus, um, idealism, but it has to come from more than just, um, fictional movies and TV shows. Mm -hmm. I think it comes down a lot to knowing yourself um knowing what you can't handle so if you know that you're going to be like super mopey and depressed like don't sit there and binge watch like tons of rom-coms you know um if you know that you have issues sorry that's the best kind of day that's the best kind of day i mean sure i mean there's nothing wrong with watching these movies right in and of themselves i don't think that they're bad or evil or wrong i think that the problem is where people start to take it to heart and like do the comparison thing. So for me, I would recommend like, you know, I think that emotional well-being, emotional health is important. So getting a therapist to really kind of like suss out the things that you are struggling with as far as like whether you're not able to be in a relationship or, you know, you've just like tried and failed at so many of these things or really like look at what, you know, is it failure or is it just the type of people that you're talking to? Um, And then just putting up boundaries, like, you know, don't watch as much of the movies, don't listen to as much of the music if you know it's gonna affect you that way. Um, And then like Star said, just like really having good role models. Like Star, you have no idea how much you blessed me the other day when I was able to come over. And like, you know, you and David were just like sharing about your relationship. And I was like, this is the stuff that I have been missing from my life because like I just really have not been able to see healthy relationships and in particular healthy black young people that are like out here thriving and just doing so well and them being able to like welcome me into their home and you know another young man that was single he was able to come to and like you guys were just able to impart your wisdom and like I just thought it was just so wonderful to be able to have that so community is key and having good people to talk to and like people that are going to be honest about like look it's not perfect it's not like we get into arguments like we're not going to agree on everything um but these are some of the things that we are doing this is not law but this is what we're doing um to make it work so yeah thank you star thanks for coming (laughs) so sweet so sweet
and I don't have FOMO about that day either. Only thing I'm wondering was who was the guy? It doesn't matter. You were driving in Florida, so. I mean, you can text me. I was mad that you didn't invite me to Florida. Why couldn't you invite me to Florida? I'm kidding. Sorry. You wanted to celebrate my daughter's birthday with you? You know I don't like. It's fine. I mean, I just want to be where you are, Alyssa. Why can't I be where you are? This is awkward. <laughs> I just want to be where you are. Tell me the guy. Y'all gotta help me plan my next. I have two things coming up. Y'all gotta help me plan it. Help me plan nothing. You don't tell me this guy's name. What? It's nice for my girl. You already know. You should. (laughs) I already know. Yes. (laughs) You're doing so extra right now. I Um, am. I am. All right. Last comments. Moving that on three. One, two. <laughs> Wait, what? Moving that on three. Moving what? Oh, on three. Moving, three. Three. Moving that on three. God, dog it. Uh, hold on. It has to be levels to this type A. All right. I didn't hear what you said. What did you say? I'm type A. Star is type AA. And then you're type AAA. So I'm A. Star is double A. And you're triple A. Okay, you're, but I'm also I'm definitely. more type A than you are? I think so. You don't think so? <laughs> Up to now, I still have no idea what y'all were saying on three. You said movie night on three, like one. Oh, movie night. Oh, I didn't hear that. We're all talking at the same time. Okay. No, she said it, and then I said it. I, I literally, all I had was movie night on three. I was like, what? Well, you just said it, so you heard it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't know what movie night. Movie I don't know what that is. <laughs> Y'all are aggravating. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so can we edit out the part where I talk about me being Type A? Because I don't want any men listening to be like, "Oh, she's Type A." A. A. They, 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 they probably gonna, need it. They text you. They don't know you. You gonna send bulleted lists? A lot of women are Type A. At least the ones I know. The Type A's hang together. Maybe because we we are all like similar in different different ways, but we're pretty similar people. <laughs> we have similar crazies. <laughs> you can't downplay the crazy. It just is what it is. It, ain't like- it is. Like- that's why, like, when David, he don't be rocking with me sometimes, I'm like, that's all right. I'm just going to go t- talk to Marvel and listen about it. Don't get me. <laughs> They'll get me. <laughs> That's how type A I am. I can't even just watch a movie. If I recognize somebody that I've seen before, I gotta go research them on Google and then look up their whole like, what is it, videography or filmography or what is it? Oh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm I'm not like so. I'm I'm similar to that to where like I've gotten a lot of spoilers with series that we watch because I'm always like wondering, like I'm always researching something about it. And so I'm like, oh, sure, I just saw a spoiler. I can't tell you what it is. Um, and then, like, I just yeah, I go through, like, interviews of the characters. I, like, see them. Like, I want to see what they're like in person. Like, I want to see how good of an actor they are because this role is so believable right now. I just have to know what they're like in real life. <laughs> I do that to some extent. But if you mess around and, like, accidentally tell me something about the story, the plot, I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be pissed. I was sitting there watching a the movie with what you call. I was like, I gotta know how old she is. She's playing 16, but she can't be 16. Oh my God, now I gotta compare their ages. And, I, and he's like, this movie's like an hour and 30 minutes. You can't sit still for an hour and 30 minutes. Oh gosh, no, Alyssa, wait. I love this Project Power. That's the movie we watched. And I was researching the actors and I was like, she's 33. Did you know he's 33? Wait, don't she's give nothing away. I haven't seen it yet. And I wanna see it. In real life. That's what I was saying. She's what what did y'all what what movie was it? We watched Project Power. I don't know what that is. It's on Netflix. It and she not. I was like, she's 33. Did you know she was 33? He was like, I don't know her. I just never I was like, okay. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> this is my first time seeing her. I need to know her. <laughs> just Have you ever watched the blacklist? Huh? Have you ever watched the blacklist? Uh-uh. I think I have, I have watched watch it. it. It's great. But yeah. 
Raymond Reddington, he's like my favorite person. And I also love Tom. If you watch it, you know what I'm talking about. But like I'm like, oh, he's such a great I'm just like the whole time like he's such a great actor. He's I was like, he's 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 played like five different people in this one series. Like he's been in himself, but like, you know, like he's been like secretly different people. And I'm like he's just an amazing actor. Like every every single role he plays in this is, is super believable. <laughs> Davis like he was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> i promise you that's how he was looking at me I'm, and I'm, I'm counting i'm like this is like the six this is like the six bro like he's he's, he's like a six character right now if i, if I count so originally he was he was like this and then he changed to this kind of person and then he was this and now he's this oh oh and now he's playing the guy from the from this place this guy is amazing <laughs> What else has he been in? <laughs> Wait, are you doing all of this like while the movie is going on? I'm doing this. Like, it's a series, so I'm like, I was like, doing this while transform before my eyes. We was watching Clash of the Titans, and I was like, this looks just. Fit. I was like, I'm getting some real Bible undertones here, or I'm seeing this in Chris. <laughs> And then I'm tracking it down, like all until like throughout the Bible in Clash of the Titans. I was like, this Greek mythology and the way that man lives down on humanity. And like he was like, can can we just uh, make the the movie? I was like, I would you not say so many good things? <laughs> so yes, we're all type A. <laughs> look at look at Marvel. I guess so. I guess so. How how are we gonna act like we worse than her? Marvel, you judging us? See, you you stay judging us. No, and... you think I'm judging? That's just my face. What I'm thinking about is I don't know what to wear to this date tomorrow. That's what I've been thinking about the whole time you guys have been talking. I literally am like, when is this gonna be done? Because I have to paint my nails and I still have to figure out what I'm gonna wear. I have no. So this concludes our segment on brown sugar. We would love to hear your thoughts on what you thought of the movie, if you've seen it, or any other movies that you would like for us to talk about. Let us know what you think. <laughs> you know, you speak brown girl out while you at it. <laughs> no. Out. Out. Disclaimer, this podcast is in no way a replacement for a licensed therapist for any mental or relationship issues you may have or are experiencing. If you are in need of a therapist, we recommend therapyforblackgirls.com. And if you are without insurance, we recommend the Open Path Collective. If you're a new listener to Speak Brown Girl, welcome. We would love to hear from you. Make sure that you rate, review, subscribe, and share with your friends. Speak Brown Girl. Out. (laughs) Ha <laughs> ha